Well, greetings, Vinyl Community. I'm back with another video about an album that has been in my collection for 50 years. This is the fourth album by Simon and Garfunkel, Bookends. This album was released in April 1968 and reached number one on the charts. Uh, iconic cover photograph by Richard Avedon. Lyrics on the back. And it originally came with a poster, which I no longer seem to have, but it looked like this. Uh, the image used on the box set of their CDs. Uh, the bridge in the picture is not the bridge over troubled waters. That would come later. This is the 59th Street Bridge, or Queensboro Bridge, which Paul Simon wrote about in the song, Feelin' Groovy, or 59th Street Bridge Song. The album itself is on the Columbia label, and that is the 2i label with 360 sound, and that's a lot of sound. This is the most produced of Simon and Garfunkel's albums to date. There's a lot of um, interesting uh, recording techniques used and very creative arrangements, and none more so than the first proper song on the album. Uh, but to get to it first, we go through the, uh, the opening bookends theme, which is a brief solo guitar instrumental, just a curtain raiser for the album. Uh, that piece and its reprise at the end of side one are literally bookends for a sort of suite that comprises most of the original material from the album, the second side being made up largely of previously released songs. So that first proper song after the intro is Save the Life of My Child, which is surely the weirdest and most psychedelic thing Simon and Garfunkel ever recorded, uh, kicking off with a violent low-frequency blast of Moog synthesizer. Uh, the verse form of the song is curiously lopsided, and it's accompanied by eerie sounds of an electronically treated choir, various percussive explosions, odd little vocal asides, and even a sample of the sounds of silence bubbling up through the chaos. The whole song has a, a bustling urban feel, I think the uh, exemplified in the lyrics as an atmosphere of freaky holiday, uh, which contrasts with the very introspective nature of the rest of the side one suite. And as the song fades, it segues into the gorgeous ballad America, which starts out with soft humming over a strummed acoustic guitar and delicate lead lines from a, another guitar being played through a Leslie speaker. And the arrangement gradually fills out with dramatic drum fills, a cathedral-like organ, a soprano saxophone enters in the bridge, and crashing orchestral cymbals in the climax. And at barely over three and a half minutes, the song has an expansive nature that wonderfully captures the journey of self-discovery described in the lyrics. And the song was prominently featured in a 1969 Simon and Garfunkel TV special that was aired on CBS titled Songs from America. The song was also notably covered by Yes. Uh, they did a 10-minute plus version originally recorded for a various artists sampler album titled The New Age of Atlantic. Um, the sound of someone lighting a cigarette leads into Overs, the next song, a rueful song about a relationship that is dried up and uh, become loveless. And after the two preceding heavily produced and arranged songs, this one is almost a Paul Simon solo performance, with Art Garfunkel not even appearing until halfway through when he takes over briefly for the bridge. And the remaining three tracks on side one all flow together as a, a sort of suite within a suite, a rumination on aging. Uh, Paul Simon and, uh, of 
of course, all the songs are by Paul Simon, uh, was all of 26 years old at the time of this album. Uh, the first of those three tracks, though, is uh, Voices of Old People, which is not a song at all, and in fact is um, identified on the back, where each song is listed as Song 1, Song 2, Song 3. Voices of Old People is Band 5, because there's no music. It's not a song. It's uh, a collage of spoken snippets recorded by Art Garfunkel at... Uh, retirement homes in New York and California, spoken commentary by the residents of the retirement homes, um, giving you the flavor of people in the, the um, autumn stages of their lives. And this flows into Old Friends, the, uh, the centerpiece of this little mini suite, which casts a seemingly sympathetic eye on the old men of the title sitting like bookends, the lyrics say, so there's the album title again, on a park bench. But it looks with age with what I hear is a bit of revulsion, with an image of dust settling on the old friends, and the line, how terribly strange to be 70. A bit of wonder, but a bit of discomfort and um, something that I think he might, uh, Paul Simon might have looked on differently when he turned 70 himself, as he did uh, a few years back. Uh, the song Halfway Through is lavished with an orchestral arrangement by Jimmy Haskell, um, or I should say it, it just takes over halfway through. Uh, strings, glockenspiel, and horns all to the fore end up swirling into this very dissonant climax before the whole thing fades into a reprise of the bookends theme, this time with lyrics concerning looking back on life and cherishing memories. The uh, Old Friends bookends theme combo was released as the B-side of the single uh, Mrs. Robinson, which we will get to as we switch over to side two. short slip. And side two opens with a brief squall of noise that uh, very much recalls the coda from Strawberry Fields Forever, and also with this sort of hand-clappy uh, beat to it, even though it's only a couple of seconds, seems to uh, look forward to Cecilia from the next Simon and Garfunkel album, which wouldn't come out for two more years. Uh, what that is, is the intro to the song Fakin' It, which was originally released as a single in July of 1967, uh, which reached number 23 on the charts. Uh, this song is treated to a full arrangement. Um, these, these single songs are going to be a little bit more in the rock and roll vein. Uh, but complete with strings, hand claps. Um, Paul Simon is reflecting on the idea that making a living by writing songs is an unlikely situation. And the line about how in the past, uh, in a past incarnation, he might have been a tailor was originally something different. And this is what Paul Simon told Rolling Stone in 1972. During some hashish reverie, I was thinking to myself, I'm really in a weird position. I earn my living by writing songs and singing songs. It's only today that this could happen. If I were born a hundred years ago, I wouldn't even be in this country. I'd probably be in Vienna or wherever my ancestors came from, Hungary, and I wouldn't be a singer-guitarist. There were none, so what would I be? First of all, I said, I surely was a sailor. Then I said, nah, I wouldn't have been a sailor. Well, what would a Jewish guy be? A tailor. That's what it was. I would have been a tailor. And then I started to see myself as like a perfect little tailor. Then, once talking to my father about my grandfather, whom I never knew, he died when my father was young, I found out that his name was Paul Simon. 
and I found out that he was a tailor in Vienna. It wiped me out that that happened. It's amazing, isn't it? He was a tailor that came from Vienna. And the line about I surely was a tailor is followed by a picturesque spoken interlude which features the voice of the British folk singer Beverly Martin, uh, future wife of John Martin, and uh, she re addresses a Mr. Leach, which is obviously an allusion to Donovan. Um, all in that, uh, that British folk scene. Paul Simon did, of course, uh, spend some time in England in the early stages of his career, so uh, he had a lot of in with the British folk um, scenesters. On the uh, single release of Fake in It had a non-LP B-side titled You Don't Know Where Your Interest Lies. Uh, probably left off of this album simply because it wasn't considered quite good enough, I would guess. Uh, it's a much more stripped down production than most of the tracks here with uh, Simon and Garfunkel accompanied by a uh, brisk rock di uh, drum beat and syncopated acoustic guitars interrupted briefly by a strange, quiet, jazzy interlude with piano. So Fakin' It is followed by Punky's Dilemma, which uh, is a breezy, laid-back confession, confection, confession, confection, uh, with uh, jazzy guitar, finger snaps, nonsensical lyrics, funny sound effects, and a whistling coda. Uh, wish I was an English muffin. That was a bit of a catchphrase, I think, around our house back in the day. And then the, uh, the best-known song from the album is Mrs. Robinson, which was famously included in the soundtrack to the film The Graduate. Uh, it had started life as Mrs. Roosevelt, but was uh, revised to reflect the name of the character in the movie. Uh, the song has a, an unusual but very simple structure. It alternates between two contrasting sections. Not really a verse and a coda, but just a sort of A and B section. The intro and the coda are instrumental versions of the B section, which features a distinctive ascending guitar lick. And um, the song proper begins with the ebullient A section, the here's to you, Mrs. Robinson, accompanied by a nagging cymbal playing on every downbeat. If you listen for that cymbal, you'll never be able to unhear it. Uh, oddly, on the lyrics in the back, they leave off that first verse, that first uh, A section, and start the song with the B lyrics. Um, but then the second A is the same lyrics, so I guess they removed it for space reasons. Um, Paul Simon once encountered Joe DiMaggio, who wanted to know, why did you ask where I'd gone? I never went anywhere. Um, Mrs. Robinson was released as a single, uh, concurrent with the album, and like the album, it reached number one on the charts. It won the Grammy for Record of the Year. Um, and it was horrifically covered by Frank Sinatra. Uh, if, if you really want to hear something cringe-inducing, check out Frank Sinatra's version. Old Frankie boy apparently didn't want to take the name of the Lord in vain, so he omitted the word Jesus from the lyrics, but that's only the beginning of his butchery. The next song on the album is the earliest recording on here. It's uh, A Hazy Shade of Winter, yet another single, uh, originally released in October 1966 and reaching number 13 on the charts. It's the most rock and roll song on bookends with a heavy drum beat, organ, tambourine, and a brief little uh, trumpet phrase popping up, uh, coming out of the mention of a Salvation Army band. And the song was notably covered in 1987 by the Bangles for the film Less Than Zero. You can go this way and go that way, but let's do it this way. We'll be conventional. Um, At the Zoo, another old single, is the final track. 
Uh, originally released in February 1967 and charting at number 16. Song begins with a soft, also almost bossa nova-ish verse with tinkling chimes, which gives way to a jaunty rock section describing the light and tumble journey to the zoo. Um, the pattern then repeats with the, the soft section and the rock section and uh, builds a little in intensity and climaxes with, what a gas! You've got to come and see at the zoo. Uh, the lyrics comically attribute various human foibles and characteristics to the animals, including ones that you wouldn't normally find in a zoo, such as hamsters and pigeons. And it all sounds quite satirical, but of what, I'm not entirely sure. So, that is Bookends. Thank you very much for watching. Be well. Talk with you again soon. Bye-bye for now.